Welcome to Ridge Life. I'm Tim. Guys, it is a nasty, dreary, wet day here in West Tennessee, but that's not going to keep us from getting work done. So come along for the ride. I stepped right over there. Oops. Oh, I just broke that blade. Yes, we've got cold air. The grow out hutch is empty. Oh my goodness, guys. Say hi, Morgan. <laughs> Give it a nice clean fit right there. You can see the trees are starting to bud behind me. Spring is almost here in West Tennessee. And guys, that means I have got to get that land cleared for that barn, but the muddy, soppy mess is keeping me from getting out there. I just sink down and you know, I can push the, the brush and stuff over, but the tractor just gets all bound up, you know, and then I gotta start getting into recovery mode, you know. It is an awesome tractor, right, David? Come on, homesteading, you know what I mean? Come on. But guys, I am going to get work done today. I don't care if it starts to rain every half hour, I'm gonna get work done today. You know, we moved the chickens and the rabbits um, over to the new Ridge property. So I've gotta protect them from animals. I've got to uh, protect them from sun. I gotta protect them from wind. You guys know how rough the winds can be here in the tornado belt in the Midwest and also our predator issues, guys. We're gonna take care of that today also. Guys, the camper, the camper has had all kinds of issues. Guys, if you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you must not be watching Ridge Life Ramblings. I've got a talk channel where I make a video almost every day, Monday through Friday, and I go over the ordeal and the, 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 the things I get myself into here on the Ridge, and you get a lot of the behind the scene footage, and you know about things before the main Ridge Life video comes out. Guys, that's Ridge Life Ramblings. I put the link to that channel right there. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. You'll get all this information well ahead of time. So. Yeah, the camper has had some issues, guys, and we'll get into that as well. Now, this camper is not a brand new camper. Matter of fact, it's almost 10 years old. And uh, Grandma Carol lived in it for a couple years while we are building her log home. So it's, been, it's, it's seen some use. And uh, now it's my turn to put it to use. And, you know, again, it got hot the other day. I mean, hot for February in West Tennessee. Um, it was like about 70 some odd degrees outside. Well, you know, it's in the 80s in that tin can. So I open up the camper when I come home from work. And again, it's just hot and humid there. Turn the air conditioner on. Yeah, it's not getting cold. I mean, for, for just a second. So let's take you inside and show you what we did. So on that first hot day, I come in here and I turn the air conditioner on and it seems to get cold initially and then it just starts blowing out ambient air. So the first thing I had to think about was this thing probably hadn't been cleaned in a very, very long time. First thing you look at is our air filter. And this is the uh, the air filter for the intake and uh, for the air that blows throughout the cabin. And it is nice and clean. You know, we, uh, Grandma Carol kept that clean when she used the camper before. Um, but the evaporative coil so the air gets sucked in from the cabin, goes through the evaporative coil. And the evaporative coil is where the coolant is, the, the cold coolant, and it cools that air and recirculates it back into the cabin. And that can get very, very dirty and it's hard to clean. So if you look way up in there, you can see that there is a, uh, like a, a, um, a radiator. It's a radiator, if you will. And, um, of course, you're inside the cabin, so you can't put a lot of uh, caustic materials in here and drip everywhere. So what I use is this uh, Dometic. No, Dometic makes air conditioners for campers, so that this is perfectly uh, fine for them. And this is a no rinse coil cleaner uh, by Dometic. Uh, advanced air conditioning coil cleaner. It's no rinse. It's foaming. So I get up there and I make sure I wear glasses and I put a, a sheet down below so anything that would drip out. Now there is a little drip pan below the, uh, the evaporative coil to collect any of that condensation. So put my glasses on, had some gloves on, sprayed this all up inside there, getting up inside the uh, evaporative coil. Uh, was pretty dirty. Was pretty dirty. Turned it back on. No it's the same. It didn't help it a bit. So that means I had to get on top of the camper. So obviously that was not the problem inside the camper. We had to get on top, get up there and see what was going on with the condenser coil. Inside the evaporative coil, outside the condenser coil. So I climb up on top and uh, take the cover off, all thousand screws, you know, get the cover off of it. And as soon as I took the cover off, I figured out what the problem was. I was going up there to clean the condenser coil but that wasn't the issue. As soon as I took the cover off, I saw that the condenser fan had a major issue, guys. This is what I found. 
that is the condenser fan blade the 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 sh the the thing that's supposed to move the air you can see there's no blades on there they were all over inside the compartment and what had happened was dirt daubers had made nests on the blades and then when we t when i turned it on uh, I don't know if it was attached to something, broke the first blade off, and then of course, as it's spinning around, all the other blades at high speeds, whack, 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 you know, and then that's the result. So um, I'll go ahead and clean off the uh, condenser cool while I was up there, and I'll, I'll show you when I get up there, I'll, I'll show you what I did to uh, do that as well. But I got home, got down that afternoon and looked on Amazon, got the part number off of it, you know, and I believe it was a Thermador, yeah, something like that. And uh, very common brand for the Dometic uh, air conditioners for campers. Found it on Amazon, guys. Oh my goodness, direct replacement. They had three left. So in just a few days, this came in. You can see this is what it's supposed to look like. And this is what I pulled out. Yeah, quite different. Now this will move air across that condenser coil and cool off that coolant, which pushes it back into the evaporative coil, keeps me cool. So. I'm gonna put this on today, and while I'm up there, I'll show you what I did to that condenser coil. I've got to get up here and change all of this lap sealant out around all these seams, because as I walked up here to the front, I stepped right over there and it is so soft right here. It is squishy, it's just squishy. And right there, the lap sealant has broken away from the seal. There you can go, see that right there. And uh, it is causing it to rot. So I've got to get in here and redo all of this lap sealant. And hopefully that dries out and the, the damage is limited to the, the board right under there. Because otherwise you got to pull all this rubber off and that's not fun. Of course, you know, I'll redo the lap sealant around that as well, but goodness gracious. Got to get all 100 of these screws out of here. And uh, then I'll go get this cover off, show you what we got inside, and go ahead and fix this fan. And then, of course, it's starting to rain again. Not, can't nothing happen without a little rain, that's for sure. Oh my goodness. Well, I'll go ahead and get everything out of here and uh, get this fan on. I think I got all the screws out now. Get this cover off of here. Ah, there we go. Make sure there's no more wasps. No? All right. Set that off to the side. And I'll show you what I got with this fan here. You can see I got all this cleaned out in here. It was real, real dirty with all kinds of debris. And I cleaned off this uh, condenser coil right here using Coil King, uh, AC coil uh, cleaner. This is a Coil King. And man, this stuff is strong. You definitely want to wear, um, um, you want to wear uh, safety glasses when you're putting that on because uh, I went to the emergency room one time. I got, I was spraying it and some got in my eye and I was in the emergency room all night. You don't want, that's some very, very strong stuff that AC coil cleaner from Cool King. But uh, now all I gotta do is get in here and slide this fan on that shaft. Yeah, guys, I am getting rained on, that is for sure. Let's see if I can get this slid on here. This is not gonna be that big a job. Lubricate that shaft there a little bit. There's the flat side. So flat side goes right on there on the flat side of the fan. Again, get it slid on all the way, all the way to the end. Oops, oh, I just broke that blade. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I just snapped the blade. All right, that's not gonna be, it, it should be okay. I, just for one blade there, it didn't crack all the way off. But um, now I can tighten that down, get this right on there, tighten that down, and uh, should be good. There we go. All right, that's tight. Now let's go ahead and test it. It stopped raining. Let's try to turn this on and see if we can get some rotation. See if it uh, actually doesn't fly itself apart. All right. Fan is blowing. I feel the air going across it. Awesome. Now that the fan blade's replaced, the condenser's running, let's go downstairs and see if we got cold air coming out of our air conditioner. 
Let's go inside and we'll see if we've got cold air coming out. Okay, make sure the thermostat's turned all the way up. Put it on high. Oh yeah. I feel it. I feel it good. Ah, yes, we've got cold air. Woohoo, everybody. I am super, super happy. Turn that off so you can hear me, guys. We have got cold air in the camper again. Oh my goodness, that makes me so happy. Um, <laughs> you just can't get better knowing you're going into spring and summer with cold air in your camper. Um, lots, lots going on out here, um, but little winds like this, we'll take it. Now, previously, I had the rabbit hutch and the chicken coop with a uh, wall of trees to the west side. But now on the west side, I've got nothing but open field. So what we need to do is we need to uh, block off the, uh, the, the, the fencing, the material on the back side of the chicken coops with a, a solid colored because on the back side of the rabbit hutch, it's, it's that uh, opaque smoke thing. So basically it, made it makes it into a greenhouse with the sun hits it in the afternoon. So we'll take off that smoke uh, opaque plastic, put on a solid uh, roofing material on the back side there. We'll do the same thing to the, um, the grow out hutch. And of course on the back side of the chicken coop, I'm gonna put a little bit back there too, just to keep that wind off them in the sun in the afternoons. Uh, they'll be open in the front though. So that should help our animals a lot. Did y'all notice something different? The grow out hutch is empty. Oh my goodness, guys. A blessing to me, my uncle came down and uh, my uncle and grandma Carol, they processed all 14 of our grow outs. I got them in a cool over there. I still got to quarter them up and get them vacuum sealed, uh, but saved me a lot of trouble because this week, you know, I, I, I had to work late two days uh, at the steel mill and uh, missed two ramblings, Ridge Life ramblings. And, uh, really needed to get these uh kits processed so they took care of them for me so i'm super super happy i don't have to worry about this i'm still going to do the uh the plastic on the back and get this prepped up and then i really need to get in with a hose and just just spray all this down get all the the fur and everything that's at the bottom of the fencing uh you know the bottom material uh but guys i am happy no more grow outs right now First thing we're gonna do is take out this opaque uh, smoke colored plastic here. Again, this would just be like a greenhouse with the sun here in the west in the late afternoon. So we'll get that off and we'll put this uh, beige colored solid plastic on the back here. That a nice block for them, keep that off there. Also the, the cool winds here in the late winter. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this off first. You can see right here, this is dog damage. See how this plastic broken here? Remember all the dogs that attacked our rabbits? Uh, been keeping fencing material around it to keep the dogs from getting up under it and around the outside. Once I get the barn built, the chickens will have their own coop and run, 100% protected, and the rabbits will be moved down and, and protected as well. Um, so this is just temporary, but um, let's go ahead and get all of these screws out, and then we'll get the uh, beige-colored solid plastic um, material on. Measured out what I need there. Put some tape across there to help protect it. I'm gonna use this uh, oscillating multi-tool. Cut a pretty straight line. I got it marked. Let's see how, how well I can do this. That worked out much better than using a circular saw. If you don't have it real tight, a circular saw will give you a floppy, jaggy edge. Uh, the multi-tool, nice and smooth. We've got our beige opaque plastic uh, cut to length. I got my trusty helper, Morgan, over here. He's down from college. Say hi, Morgan. How you doing? <laughs> All right, we're gonna get this set up, get it lined up, basically on the same holes we used before, Morgan. Go all the way to the top. Okay, come down. How much do you have room for on your end? Is it all the way to the edge? That's uh, a quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch? Okay, right there would be good. Get the first one in. All right, you hold that one. Hold it right there. 
All right. All right, one here. And two down. Two down. Two down. One at the very bottom. Give it a little support. All right, let's move on down. Now let's get you in a time lapse. I think that looks very good. Uh, we'll get it cleaned up a little bit, get the top cleaned off, but this should protect not only from the wind, but from those super hot sun, uh, those rays in July and August will just bake your rabbit. So this is gonna be work great. This one's gonna be for the backside of the grow out hutch. Again, should be a perfect fit. Keep all that wind and sun off of them. <laughs> For the one on the back of the grow out hutch, I'm gonna leave a little bit of gap at the bottom to get some airflow through there. Again, those rabbits really need airflow. So let's go ahead and get one in here. Okay, hold that in, Morgan. Let's get one on that side just to get it lined up. All right, you can let go. So now that should, yeah, leave a little, about a three quarter of an inch, inch gap at the bottom, a little paused airflow, keep them kits nice and cool. Go ahead and get these finished up. Guys, we're making some progress today, aren't we? We're gonna do opaque on the bottom and then we'll do the translucent on the top just to give them a little light while they're perching, perching, uh, perching up there and they can see out a little bit. So let's go ahead and get one set up here. And then uh, one right here just to hold it in place. And then one right here. I think we are good. All right, now let's go ahead and get the translucent and then we'll put, finish putting the rest of the screws in. Went ahead and pre-cut the top one and undid the bottom one so we can overlap it, give it a nice clean fit right there. I think this looks really good with this little overlap right here. I like this a lot. And then we got it pretty level. Get two right here. I think we're in like Flynn here, guys. That looks really, really good. I am super pleased at how this turned out, guys. We've got the translucent on the top of the chicken coop here. Of course, we have the opaque at the bottom. Block that wind at the bottom. Block the wind on the grow outs. Block the wind over here on the breeders. We'll get out here with a hose and pressure washer and clean all the, uh, all the debris off the bottom here. Get everything repainted brown. I'm probably going to uh, paint the chicken coop uh, white portions brown as well. Make everything look uniform. I like to have everything looking nice and sharp here on the ridge. So guys, I am happy with this one. Well, we made lemonade out of lemons today, didn't we? Rain, sleet, or snow, we will get it done here on the ridge. Got up there on top of that camper, got the air conditioner fixed. It did crack the fan blade, but it seems to be doing just fine. And uh, warm weather is coming very soon, and I am glad to have air conditioning. It was so fortunate that I got up on top of it to see the leak 
in that, that soft spot in the, the camper roof. The silicone hold, is holding to keep the water out, but guys, I gotta get up there as soon as it dries out and get that lap sealant on, that rubberized lap sealant. And as a matter of fact, I'll do it all over the entire uh, uh, camper roof but that front seam area, gotta get that fixed. Otherwise that will just cave in and I'll, I'll have big issues there. So very blessed to be able to notice that when we were working on the air conditioner. And then guys, getting out here, finishing weatherizing our chicken coop and our rabbit hutches. Um, the wind and the rain here, is fe it's February, so it's still pretty bad outside and who knows, we could get sleet and s snow again, um, but this, this will help protect them. And then of course, it's gonna be hot here in, in March, it's super hot in, in West Tennessee and you might get snow in the same week. So the sun will be protected, uh, uh, blocked off for them as well with, with this uh, siding we put on there. I'm just super, super happy with how that turned out. Here uh, in a couple weeks, I'm gonna be going up to the 41.36 with a Simple Life Reclaim and uh, Country Road Cure helping um, Mel and Gary put their trusses up. I'll be staying with David from Come On Homestead, so be watching out over these next couple weeks because I have lots of stuff to bring back here on Ridge Life. Some good, good videos for you, that's for sure. Um, Tuesday, Tuesday, guys, coming up on Ridge Life Ramblings, I'm having Simple Life Reclaim live on my show on StreamYard, so don't miss Ridge Life Ramblings with Simple Life Reclaim live. You get to ask them all kinds of questions yourself, and of course, I'll ask them Ridge Life questions as well. So make sure you don't miss that. And I am just super happy you guys are along for this journey with me, Tim, here on Ridge Life. So guys, until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed, blessed day and go Ridge Life. Uh -huh.